For the past three years, I've been living between the Caribbean and Kenya. Basically, black girl heaven. Only COVID-19 could pull me away from the continent. Living in Africa was beyond my wildest dreams and more than I could have ever prepared for. It's definitely been a life-changing experience and I miss the essence of Africa every day. This series, Kindred Spirits, is about me returning to my roots, which has always been highlighting and celebrating my fellow artists. And although there are many people in this series that I love and adore, I got distracted by this gentleman's work while on social media when he posted a gorgeous rendition of Leonardo da Vinci's Lady with an Ermine with a Nigerian model and a cat instead of an ermine or a weasel. I had to make a smart aleck remark and talk about how much I hate cats but loved the image and I quickly fell down the rabbit hole of his website full of beautiful images of African beauty, class, and pride. I thought it would be most fitting to begin this series with my virtual return to the continent with an interview with Ade Sanya of Ace Pixels Photography. Okay, thank you Ade Sanya for joining me today. I really appreciate you taking some time. Um, so I don't remember which group it was, but I saw your work on the Facebook I group, really, remember? I really can't remember. <laughs> I mean, I posted, I, I posted that, uh, I posted those images in mean, a couple of, um, couple of groups. I mean, I just kept posting on final groups, um, photographic groups, a lot, a bit more on final groups. So it must have been one of those final groups that you, we probably met and all that. Yeah, I think all it was a uh, fine art photography or something, and then it turned into a, a cat debate. But it's a really beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, remember? I remember. I, I remember that one. <laughs> yeah. That was quite. That was quite. That was quite hilarious. So I you mean, are a cat lover, back, and I am not. Uh, should I say? Should I say a new cat lover? <laughs> do you have a cat? <laughs> yeah, do you like, own a cat too, or do you, are you just admiring from afar? Well, uh, at the moment, I'm admiring from afar because okay. um, my wife has not gotten on that table yet. Okay. She. She. She, she would not, she can't stand cats at the moment. So um, I, I dare not bring one into the home if, it's, if it wants to survive. So right. I just admire them from afar. So I really, cats aside, it was a beautiful portrait. And, um, yeah. and I really ended up investigating your work and liked your work a lot. So thanks for taking Thank some you. time to spend with me to have a little chat today. Um, Thank you. So can you tell me a little bit about your photography background and sort of how you got started and, you know, if there was somebody who encouraged you to pursue that talent? Okay. Um, well, um, I would say I've, I, I had a very artistic um, childhood. Um, there was a lot of music, a lot of art. Um, not directly, not like actively, but then I was exposed to a lot of art. Um, I loved cartoons, so I, I I was me. I have I have three I have three siblings, all boys, and um, you know boys love a lot of cartoons and um, music. We found um, some love in different genres of music. My dad my dad was a huge Michael Jackson fan. Um, you also like jazz. <clears throat> um, so I've kind of like had this um, background of um, um, dabbling into the arts, loving the arts and being an admirer of the arts from way back. Um, well, in the university, I, I well, we call it the, the science class here. No, no, okay, in, 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 in high school, I was in the science class. So in the university, I put in for um, a course called Medical Laboratory Science, um, called Biomedical Science over there, or um, Laboratory Technology over there in different spheres. Um, so <clears throat> I'm, a, I'm, 
I am a licensed medical laboratory scientist. Um, not many people know that. In fact, not many of my friends that knew um, about my medical laboratory science background even remember that right now. Sometimes I have to remind them that way. I think just, I mean, I have, I have a background somewhere else, not photography. But then I started photography while, while I was in the university. Um, something close to like my second year in, in the university. Uh, it was a five-year course. Um, somewhere around my second year in university. Um, I used to take a lot of pictures of my phone. I used to like taking pictures of cloud formations and I just used to see stuff nobody was seeing. I mean, like I could just be walking on my way home from lectures and I see interesting cloud formations or sunsets. I just whip on my phone, start taking pictures. You understand? I used to get a lot of weird stares back then, like, what the heck is this guy doing? <laughs> like standing in the middle of the road taking pictures. <laughs> All right. So um <clears throat> one way, one way or the other, I I I got my first camera. It was a gift from my uncle. Um, I, I, they, they got to know about my interest in photography and that was his way of um, supporting me. That was, so that was my first camera. That was a Nikon D3000. Um, I still have it though. I don't know why I still have that camera. <laughs> I still have it. I don't shoot with it though, but I still have it resting somewhere in my house. <clears throat> probably Sunday, it's probably in a museum or so. So um, I started photography actively. Um, this September makes it 10 years since I found photography. I mean, like I, I, well, sometimes one of my weak points is like, I don't keep like records of special events. My wife is very strong at that. So <laughs> she reminded me this year that this year makes it 10 years since you started photography. I mean, it, it's, I, it really was a big deal for me because way back then, I never saw myself um, doing photography full time. Although, although I'm, I'm a licensed medical laboratory scientist, but I, I do not practice. I mean, I'm not, I don't do um, the regular bench, bench work because um, I, I, I got to a point where I had to focus on this. It was either I stuck to medical laboratory science and photography suffered because based on the on um, the work the, the work schedule around here, it's not as flexible as you would want to. Um, so you have like a five day work work week and um, with optional like alternating weekend calls. You understand? So, I mean, imagine doing that and trying to trying to focus on photography, you, I, 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 was, I was approaching Bona at that point. It wasn't easy. Well, luckily for me, um, my wife is and still is one of my biggest fans and supports my biggest support system. I mean, sometimes I wonder like, what, what would my life have been like if I was with somebody else, if I married somebody oh, that's else? that's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like somebody. I mean, it's 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 weird. Okay, so she's a, she's a medical doctor, and I'm a medical laboratory scientist. You know, to outsiders, that's a perfect match. You right. understand? Yeah. So, so imagine imagine me saying turning my back on years of study yeah. just to become a medical laboratory scientist. Then I say I want to become a professional photographer. All right. I mean, <laughs> a couple of folks <laughs> it was i mean even i couldn't i couldn't i couldn't take that leap on my own because i was scared i mean right. like anybody would be scared because you need you you don't leave a glamorous um career in in the medical field and say you want to do photography which right. in some cases can be a bit um <clears throat> uncertain and um, sometimes may not be as um, um, secure as being a medical laboratory scientist. <clears throat> so um, we have something we call, um, so after your university um, um, education, you, we, um, as, as, as a medical laboratory scientist, I would have to go for a one year internship in, in 
in, in, in an hospital. Mm -hmm. Then after that, we have a, we have a national youth service um, call that everybody has to participate in. You understand it? Yeah. It's like a it's like a paramilitary, not like a more like a paramilitary thing where you get posted to different sections of the country. Um, you serve uh, in coach, you serve your country for one year, and um, um, so I would say that that period of my life was one of the um, most miserable of my life. Oh, I, th I thought you were going to yeah. say something great. <laughs> <laughs> no, Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it was. I mean, it was one of the most miserable years of my life. My wife was in our, fi our final year in mm -hmm. med in medical um, school, and um, we were, we, were, we were already married, mm -hmm. and um, so we're not really all to we're not together all the time. So she, she, she comes in once in a while from school, and I was still having my um, youth service done and so it was just a routine for me go to work run samples do this and I like that you understand right uh, medical laboratory science is a very interesting um discipline don't get me wrong yeah um if I had my way if I if I, if I was living in a in a um climb where um the work schedule was more flexible or um there were opportunities for me to do that I still may not just, I still may just be a photographer right now. Yeah. I mean, thinking about it right now, if, if, if I wasn't in Nigeria right now, I still might just be a photographer right now. Yeah. And I feel like, um, you know, when, when, when um, a lot of people tell you that ah, you, you, you're a very talented photographer, you're a very talented artist, um, your work is amazing. But then, you know, if you, you need to be a scene yourself. So it was during that period of my life that I got to understand that okay, this is what I want to do. This is what, this is what I can do all day and forget that I'm not eating. <laughs> this is what I like to do that right. I have um, that is like fun to me. Yeah. You understand? Photography is like it's not like work to me. It's fun and it's also good to be able to make um, some some money from that. Right. You understand? And um, so. It's that has been my, my my journey so far. So um, after after I decided to go full time into photography, um, one of the I well funny thing is that a while back somebody some someone had advised me to take a one year internship with a top photographer. Um, when I when I was done, it sounded crazy to me that why would I do that? I am just finishing my discipline as a medical laboratory scientist. I want to practice what I learned in school. You understand? So that sounded crazy to me. But then at that point, everything just kind of fell in place. And um, the opportunity came. I applied and I got the internship spot. I mean, it's, it still baffles me to today how I got that, uh, how I was chosen. Well, um, so... Um, my my mentor and boss at the moment who i i did the internship with um is called image faculty um his name is um mr smart you don't you don't want to see it. he's the he is one of nigeria's top photography educators you understand and even in africa also because he's held classes out of nigeria in kenya in um ghana you understand, and is currently also um, even um, we're, we're planning a workshop. You understand, because we hold workshops for photographers, and um, I mean, he, 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 I mean, he was someone I used to admire from way back. As far right. as when I was in my second year, I still look back into my archives and I see images of his works that I saved back then, and we knew that years down the line I would. Um, I'll be his intern, you understand? And that has been one of the, um, this one year of internship has been, a, has been a, a great experience for me because I got to discover things about myself that I didn't know. I got to experiment with stuff that is not necessarily commonplace stuff you know, around here. Yeah. Um, everybody does portraits, everybody does Wedding, the, the, the wedding industry is one of the most famous parts of photography in Nigeria. And I think 
elsewhere in the world also. Mm -hmm. Then I decided also with some counsel from a friend of mine who is a wedding photographer. He had told me way back, even way before I decided to get into photography, that, man, you, you make good portraits. Why not just focus on this? Eventually, I did, and I started experimenting. Sorry. <clears throat> and that image you saw was a result of my experiments, you understand? And I, I, I've, been, I've been an avid lover of the heart, even though I didn't do any art-related stuff in school. Mm -hmm. I've been an avid lover of the arts. My dad used to have paintings in the house. Um, <clears throat> one of the um, fondest memories or scary, should I say scary memories I, I have of arts from my childhood was a um, the 3D um, frame of a parrot that was in a frame. There was like a parrot, like it was like a carving. Okay. Then it was framed. So, you know, as a child, that used to look very big to me. And at night, when I look at that parrot, I used to get scared. But then I loved it. And <laughs> there were so many paintings in the house. So I, I started doing a, a lot of research on um, the Dutch masters, on artists from way back. And that's where I discovered, um, discovered Rembrandt, discovered um, Johan Vermeer. Um, I, as a person, have been someone who likes to um, portray a lot of um, indigenous African um, African um, embodiments in my work as a photographer. I've always wondered how I could do that. You know, <clears throat> the, tr the, the truth is this. We have a lot of... Um, Caucasian portraits out there, and um, you cannot create enough fair skin in coat um, beauty portraits that will stand out if you're not promoting what is indigenous to you. And so early, early this year, one of my targets was to create a lot of portraits of um, in coat melanin, mm -hmm. um, the dark skin individual, you understand? And I used to wonder because I, 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 I actually have this app on my phone um, that um, it's called AdDroid, and it used to it, it's it's like it create uh, um, they create a lot of art from the past, and you can actually go through all the works of each artist. And I used to look at them, and <clears throat> um, I I couldn't find enough iconic black paintings. You understand, right. um, and if there were any blacks, if there were any blacks in the um, in the paintings, they were either subservient or right. being portrayed in a negative manner. Right. You understand. So I felt, okay, why not just reimagine what this iconic portrait would be like if these individuals were dark skinned. Right. And if they that's were where, respected in where. the same light and, and if their beauty exactly. was appreciated if, in the same in the yeah, same if manner. They were portrayed, yeah, if they were portrayed as being regal, not as being um, less than yeah. what they were. Right. You understand? Yeah. And um, so that's 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 what birthed that experiment. I'm still I'm still in it. Um, but then I, I I didn't expect the kind of reactions I got from the initial one. The really? first person I did was, um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, that was just me experimenting. I was blown away by the reactions, by the feedback I got. Yeah. I did um, Yoran Vermeer's um, Girl with the Pearl Earrings. Yeah, with so the cowrie shell. Of the pearl earrings, I was like, yes! Yeah, I used, <laughs> I used the shell earring. I mean, like, I was speaking to my stylist and I was like, what if we used a cowrie or yeah a, a shell instead mm -hmm. of a pearl and we used um more in uh, an indigenous fabric you right. understand yeah to have a bit of um african narrative to the story right and it was it, it was on board and it created stuff and the rest is history i mean that image was everywhere 
<laughs> so that oh, that that gave me um, that gave me a sign that there's something yet worth doing. And um, we did um, the second one, Lady. That was um, Leonardo da Vinci's Lady with the Emin. So I felt like okay. Um, so what I what I used to, what I do before I create these things, I research on the backstory of all these paintings. What these subjects were? Were they people of royal descent? Were they people? Were they just ordinary human beings? And the stories, the, the stories were actually very interesting. So that also inspired me with this second one, the one we, the the one that built this interview. And <laughs> I looked at it that, yeah, I I looked at it that, okay, I can't readily get um, the animal used in that painting, I mean, where would I get that? But I can address something with this. Instead of that, why not just let's use a cut? Mm -hmm. Now, the idea behind this is this, um, because we, we are in a um, phase of history where um, the systemic racism that's been occurring is being brought to uh, brought to light and there's a lot of awareness going on. So I wanted to also do stuff that also addressed that and talked about what we've been talking about underneath using an iconic figure because you need to use something iconic for people to really recognize it at first. Right. I've done some, I've, I've done some other um, experimental stuff that really didn't get as much buzz as these other ones and i saw that if you're going to get people's attract uh, attention you need to use something they're familiar with you need to use something they are, they are they are used to something they know and using leonardo da vinci's lady um with the ermine um so in my i don't know it might be the same all over the world or in some cultures hats are not really um liked by certain parts of the country. Um, there's been this narrative about cuts as being diabolic, mm -hmm. uh, as being unfriendly, as being um, generally not nice, unlike dogs. Everybody loves dogs, you right. understand? Um, so, <laughs> yeah. So, also, and I've said, let me mirror this against the dark skin individual. Right. There's been there's been these two individuals are one of the most misunderstood folks in history. <clears throat> Where in the past it was said that being black was being inferior or was being less intelligent or was meant being less of a human or and less yeah, and also less beautiful. with the same, um, you know, less pure and and more aggressive or more exactly. violent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. So that was that was my that that was my thought. Like, let me use this piece to address that, and I just wanted to draw some similarities between these two individuals, the the lady with the dark skin and the cut that <clears throat> are both very misunderstood yeah well um i got i got i got a lot of good reactions and trust me i got i, I got a ton of bad reactions too really um, well I, I yeah i mean i mean as much as much as i got good reactions i got a lot of, i got a ton of um um pessimistic um i would say pessimistic reactions from certain individuals that i would probably say uh uh, not so liking of um, um, the dark skin individual. Right. I wouldn't and, want to call them. I, I, would, I, would, I wouldn't want to uh, try to. Exactly. I wouldn't black want to black folks to call in that them light racist. to begin with, right? Like, exactly. basically, exactly. you're mad Nobody, because it's, it's a beautiful black girl in this position. Exactly. It's, it's yeah. like a cultural shock. Yeah. And it probably took a lot of people by surprise. Like, nobody right. imagined. Although I would, I, I would not want to say I would not want to claim um, um, credit for stuff like this. The, the, there's been a lot of um, interpretations of such paintings right. in the dark skin tone. Um, 
One very, one very um, um, prominent one that I remember is an interpretation by Jenny Boots. And I really, I really loved our interpretation. But then I wanted to bring an African vibe to the interpretation and tell a story of, you understand, of how what we, what, what we've been told is less valuable is actually gold. You understand? What we've been told is bad is actually very good. And also to talk about um, why people should not really readily discriminate against things they don't understand. You understand? Because it's different does not really mean it's bad. Right. Well, that doesn't apply in all cases. But then in, in most cases, if something is different, some people, people tend to revolt against it. So right. if, you, if you're the darkest person in the room, you, you get a lot of weird stares. Right. You understand? If you're not um, the, the, the most playful of animals, you're, you're, you're said to be um, a very naughty kind of stuff. And um, also, not forgetting, um, um, in, my, in, in my culture or in some cultures in Nigeria, mm -hmm. cats are associated with, um, uh, with diabolical stuff. So some say they, are, they can be possessed by evil spirits there. So some, I think we have some so of mean, that so here sometimes, <laughs> In the black community, uh, yeah, there's so, some so, superstitions around uh, cats exactly. and them killing your babies. So. And them. I just don't <laughs> like them because they are, they are annoying and I, they make weird sounds. And <laughs> I, don't, I, I always say nothing can trust live in me, my house smaller me. than me because I'm a very big person. So if I'm going to slip in the shower and kill something, have animal rights coming to arrest me, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> but oh I goodness. think I think we I think you guys gave us that and we're still holding on to this uh cat thing <laughs> over here on, on exactly. this side. <laughs> you know, you know, it's so it's not it's not really like um uh, it's not really like an African tip, but then it's 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 global. So yeah, this is just cats 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 are just an example of animals that are misunderstood. Yeah, yeah. There are so many other animals that are misunderstood, and there are so many people that are, that are misunderstood also. But then in this case, I decided to um, zoom in on the melanin skin and on cats. Yeah, okay, yeah. so you find, you, find, you, you find a lot of folks killing cats, find a lot of discrimination against them, same as people that are of a darker um, skin right. tone, you understand? So that was my in intention when, when I started and created that um piece yeah uh, yeah i've got i've gotten a lot of um some some folks talking about cultural appropriation talking about um um this not being authentic art you understand but then um i've as the message says you have to try to understand people's perspective and give them the rights to have their opinions it right. doesn't necessarily have to um be what you believe they have a right to their opinions, and um, I've just I've just had some interesting discussions with some folks online. I've let some people go, and um, you know I've just chosen my battles wisely. I don't want to. <clears throat> I'm not like an activist. Right. I'm not like an activist or something. But then I just feel like I have a voice. Let me just yeah only... confounded <clears throat> white supremacy. <laughs> 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 and you find and you find and you, you find out that um some 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 um industries are taking advantage of that um that perceived um fault in our uh, ideologies mm -hmm. you know um that's where that's where you find um um skin lightening products yeah. you have um, um beauty products that are targeted at um, dark skin individuals to make them grow a, maybe two steps higher than their normal skin tone, like yeah. two stops higher. You understand? Yeah, yeah. I mean, nobody, nobody sells, okay, except, and you see, you, you, you also see this in among Caucasians where they are trying to be um, two shades darker than what they, what they normally yeah. are. You mm -hmm. understand? You find yeah. people assuming, uh, assuming race, um, assuming some other person's race. I mean, right. it used to be weird to me until I, until I saw a couple of examples of um, people that have identified as black individuals, you understand? So I feel, I feel eventually it's <laughs> yes. all about, um, 
it's all about our insecurities being exploited by um, by all these folks. And I feel right now people are beginning to appreciate and see that. I mean, I'm dark and I'm beautiful. I've got nappy air and it's beautiful. Yeah. I've got coily air and it's fine. You understand? Yeah. I feel it's 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 um it's a we we just on um, we are a step in the right direction. We're heading towards that. Yeah. Um, and by the time we have more discussions around these topics, hopefully the next generation coming after us will not be as considered as we are. You understand? Some folks are just not. You know, they just beyond help. Well, I well maybe not maybe, but then some folks are just stuck in their ways. But then the more we have these conversations, I feel the um, better we'll be able to establish new ideologies of equality and um, appreciation of our diversity. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Tell me a little bit like about Nigeria, because I know you've been traveling around and, you know, kind of discovering more about your own country as well through your photography. So like, where are you from and where are some places that you have been that are maybe different? Actually, what is what is your ethnic group as well? You can tell us. OK, about um, that. well, um, normally I'd say I'm Nigerian right? and um, two. I would say I belong to the ethnic tribe called the Yoruba, mm -hmm. the Yoruba um, ethnic tribe. Um, there are so many ethnic tribes in Nigeria, but then the um, three most popular in quotes are the Yoruba, the Igbo, the Awusas. But then there are so many other, there are like a lot of other tribes in Nigeria. So it's not like a, um, we just only have three major ones. So um, I wouldn't say I've traveled a lot around Nigeria, but I've been I've, I've been to a couple of states. Um, so I've been to Zamfara. Um, that's where I um, I was posted for my youth service, although I came back to Lagos. Um, so I live I live in Lagos, and um, Lagos is more um, cosmopolitan. Mm -hmm. um, Zamfara is um, is is heading towards the the um, the the Sahara, you understand? Okay. So the vegetation, the, the vegetation is a bit more um, sparse over there. Down down south, you have a lot of lush vegetation and um, lots of greenery, and sometimes you have a lot of um, um, folks coming from the north to the south to um, to get some of their cattle to feed. You understand? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I've been to I've been to um, so I'm from I'm from Ogun State. In um, in Nigeria, other states, and um, I've been to Abeokuta. I've been to a couple of places in other states, and um, um, one of the major things, one of the major exports from other states is the um, batik and the tie and dye um, um, material, which is what I used in um, those two in the portraits um, renditions that I did. <clears throat> exactly. Um, so. Um, we, in Nigeria, Nigeria has a lot of has a lot of rich um, cultural um, um, expressions, especially in our clothing, um, our our food. I mean, we love we love our food around here. We love our jollof. Yeah, we know. We know. Things we we, <laughs> we, we know about is, the wars. The jollof, yeah. <laughs> The Nigerian Jollof. We know. Yeah, Nigerian yeah. Jollof. <laughs> Nigerian Jollof can change your life, man. I mean, <laughs> just... <laughs> I've not had Ghanaian Jollof, so I, I don't know if I should even speak and get the Ghanaians mad at me, but I've not, okay, I've not so had I'm not, it. I'm not, yes, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say don't test the Nigerian Jollof first. I've had the Nigerian, I've had Nigerian Jollof. But I've not had Ghanaian. You have? Yes, I've oh, had. I love man. jollof. I love it. Love it. But oh, I haven't had so many I to compare sister. it to, so I don't know. <laughs> well, don't spoil your palate, though. <laughs> <laughs> Don't stick to the Nigerian Jollof. We have just stay where I'm good. Day. Just stay where I'm good, yeah. right? <laughs> stay where you're good, man. Save your GIT. <laughs> but then, but then they, um, they, they, they also have very nice jollof also, which is better. 
Okay. <laughs> Um, so um, in Lagos here, yeah, Lagos is like um, is like New York. Yeah, yeah. Um, we have a, we have a lot of um, people coming from the different states in the country to trade, to make a living, to do business. You understand? So Lagos is more like the economic hub of Nigeria, as it also has um, major shipping um, entries into the country, uh, the shipping ports and. Um, so um, you know, it, it it used to be the capital of Nigeria before it got moved to Abuja. So um, there's 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 a mix there's a, there's a mix of uh, ethnicity, cultural practices, and so you find every tribe in Nigeria, and you find everybody from the from across the world in Lagos. Everybody wants to come to Lagos, to yeah, Lagos, because Lagos is where everything happens. Yes, because you see you see most a lot of our uh, for of our Nigerian born artists. Um, they they always want to come back to Lagos because if you've not made it in Lagos, man, if 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 you're not big in Lagos, you're not big anyway. Right. <laughs> well, so so they say. So um, uh, Nigeria Nigeria is a very culturally diverse um, um, country. Um, we've not we've not really enjoyed a lot of good press in the in the West, I must say, because. Um, a lot of our issues are blown out of proportion. Yeah, we have we have issues just like any other country in the world. We have some insurgencies, some insurgencies, some insurrections in some places, some chaos, just like every other place, you know. So, um, but then I, I I believe that the good in Nigeria outweighs whatever negative. Um, press we're enjoying you understand so um well there's never really any positive there's not a lot of positive press about africa unless it's um somebody going yeah, there true. To, to help and show how much they you have know, helped you know, africa you know you know, you know? You know <laughs> exactly that africa africa is like everybody's everybody's um everybody's project like everybody comes to africa to help africa i mean yeah. africa is way richer than what 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 right um, what is being said over there? Some, some some people think Africa is just a country. Like, right. are you from Africa? <laughs> what what state in Africa are you from? I mean, right. so many so many weird, uninformed yeah. statements. So I mean, but Africa Africa um, Africa is the is the future. The the future belongs to Africa, and um, yeah, I I, I I can say so because you know, judging by judging by the new the new um, movement, even in the film industry, one of the most iconic ones was um, the Black Panther. Yeah. Um, rest in peace to Chadwick. Chadwick. Yes. Um, I mean, like, it really, it really showed Africa in the way Africa um, is meant to be. I mean, yeah. one of the first civilizations could be, could be traced to Africa. I mean, right. so, a, a, a whole lot of um, uh, cultural... Um, um, practices or things were taken from Africa and were adopted elsewhere. Right. So, um, like you said, Africa doesn't enjoy the best of press, but then um, we as Africans are taking the bull by the own and telling our stories the way right. it's meant to be told. Because it's weird when, when someone who's not African in quotes, because they, they tend to tell the story through a biased lens right. or through a biased view, um, only focusing on the bad press because, you know, they say that nothing sells as much as bad press and bad news. Bad news travels very fast. And um, so we, we as Africans are, are telling our stories the way we feel it should be told. And um, I mean, there are, there are a lot of creative folks out here in Africa doing oh my God. massive stuff. Yeah, yeah, the 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 art scene and the the environment. I, I think Africa has always, as a whole, been a place that is just generally very creative. I think African people exactly. naturally are very creative people, traditionally, right? Yeah. But um, right now, like the art scene in West Africa, and definitely the time that I've been in Nairobi there's definitely something that's happening now with you know the the present generation the upcoming generation where it's yeah. do you feel that 
it's becoming acceptable to be an artist and and that you know parents are are stopping to force the kids to do you have to be a doctor you have to be a lawyer you have to be an engineer you know yeah, like when i was going to yeah. university all my yeah. african friends had to go and study one of these four things or they could not <laughs> breathe you know and no matter what yeah. talents they had in other things that that was not nurtured do, so it feels like what they wanted to do. yeah and it feels like that's finally becoming less of of importance and also i think maybe mm. the older generation is starting to realize that you know what he's studying and he's studying and he's wasting a lot of money because he's not good <laughs> at this you know <laughs> exactly so, exactly so do you think like the arts is starting to become a, a more acceptable career in in africa or in nigeria at least yes yes it is it's becoming of course like you said um, the older generation are starting to see um, that um, a lot of our energy is being um, directed towards um, the creative arts. And um, well, um, yes, it's becoming because people, more and more, more parents are becoming, uh, parents are becoming more welcoming of, um, um, should I say, um, less known career paths for the children, you understand. Um, not many parents would have supported the um, children that wanted to be footballers in, in the generation before us. Right. Not many parents would have supported photographers as children. I mean, you, you, the moment you mention anything towards that, I mean, photographers were probably um, known to be um, the, the, the lower um parts of the society like mm -hmm. you never do wells you understand even artists also musicians and the rest you're going to starve <clears throat> <But> then, um, <laughs> yeah you're like i mean i send it to school to study this right. and you're telling me you want to do this no yeah so a lot of folks would actually go to school get them the degrees they wanted then go back to do what they want to do yeah you understand but then so once you see a lot of this happening, um, you start to see that there is a shift, a mental shift from the generation before us to um, the creatives, to, to the creative arts. And nothing, nothing sells better than the economic um, potentials, trust me. If it wasn't economical viable, if it was only um, in, if, 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 if those, um, these things were only famous, you understand? Or if they're only popular with no attendant economic value, you wouldn't get this kind of support. So I would say the um, attached economic um, value that um, comes with the arts has become an encouraging factor for a lot of parents. Because, you know, when you see um, folks doing stuff in a little while, in just a short time, compared to how long it took you to achieve those things, you start to see a lot of value. Okay, probably there's something here that this people are doing that is making um, a lot of sense. And also a lot of international recognition has also brought um, people from the other side to see that, okay, okay, there's something here worth um, pursuing. Right. And the the narrative the, the narrative is changing it's really is changing so um, people are becoming more supportive of um, those career endeavors and I feel like even beyond this generation the next generations their 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 career paths that don't exist right now that would become um, choice careers yeah. you understand I mean yeah. so many things that we do right now that never used to be and where was was unthinkable a couple of years back. Yeah. So the change, the change, the, the change has started, and it's starting in Africa also in Nigeria. It's becoming more attractive to be um, an artist, and a painter, a painter. You understand? So yeah, it's definitely yeah. becoming there's, more there's more viable, and and I think um you know exactly. maybe people on the continent are also understanding finally how important it is 
to tell your own story, you know, and to be True. in charge of that narrative and to celebrate each other, you mm -hmm. know, and to celebrate each other through exactly. portraiture, through media, through, you know, videos and, and radio mm -hmm. and podcasts and so forth. Because like now anybody can have right. their own radio yes. show, you know, you don't need a acceptance. You don't need a big station. You, you know, you can start your you own really podcast don't. and you're going, you know, so yeah, there's a yeah. lot. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of options yes. that that didn't exist um before so tell so tell me when i come to lagos you know it's funny because i have always been interested in going to nigeria i am convinced <laughs> that i'm a little nigerian like most black okay. americans we all think that we're uh, we all think that we're a little nigerian you know yeah, you, you got, well you love you love your love so you're, you're I, definitely, I do. You definitely have some nigerian in you and i can dance right so <laughs> Yeah. So, um, oh, yeah. <laughs> I must be a little Nigerian too, but um, it's funny because I, I used to look exactly. at the the visa. I used to look at the visa for Nigeria as a as so difficult to get, but now in the age of COVID nineteen, it seems like it was. Um, <laughs> It seems like it was uh, <laughs> silly to f feel like that was a big challenge because now it's everything is a challenge for us. So, um, if exactly. I come so, or when I come to Nigeria, where should I go? Because in Kenya, I feel like everybody goes to Nairobi and they stop, and there's so many other things. So, where should I be going? <laughs> What, what's some Man, good that's... spots to go to in Nigeria? Oh, and and what should wow. I do or not do, actually? Okay, let's start from um, when you come to Lagos, when you come to Nigeria, you're coming to Lagos. Um, they're, they're, no, they're, Lagos, Lagos has um, a, a couple of sections. You have the mainland, you have the island, and... and um, um, you know, we have, Lagos is a coastal um, city, so we have a lot of um, water surrounding us. So there's the mainland, so-called mainland, there is the island. Now, um, the, the, there are a lot of cinemas, there are a lot of art centers. Um, you have the National, um, the, the, the National Museum, you have um, the National Theater in Igomo. You have so many landmarks. You have stadiums. You have um, you have um, arts art centers. You understand? You, you have you have. There's a lot of now. Now that I think about it, we have a lot of art centers. We have a lot of um, 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 tech spaces. There's 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 a there's a emerging tech industry coming out of Lagos. So you you you, you definitely want to check out a lot of the tech. Um, Protect orbs. There are a lot of co-working spaces. There are a lot of um, um, there are a lot of. I mean, we have we have a lot. So um, so now we have very good nightlife. We have a very good music scene. Um, we have a lot of um, although the 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 pandemic has limited a lot of um, these things. The nightlife is not what it used to be before. Um. Uh, you need you need to try a lot of food. Uh, you need to try a lot of our, um, uh, our street food. We 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 love our street food. We love our fries. We love our, our cakes. You understand um, what not to do. Um, just like just like any other place in the world, you want to be security conscious. You want to uh, make sure that you have a um, someone who knows the terrain. You don't want to be on your own because we 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 because we because we are very friendly um when people get lost we are very eager to describe places sometimes places people don't know right <laughs> and you end up and you end up getting lost <laughs> you understand so you you want to get some <laughs> you want to get someone who knows who knows the, <laughs> the terrain um, well, good. The, the good thing is that Google Maps, Google Maps works a whole lot, works very well. Yeah, and you also want to know the season you're coming. Is it the rainy season? Is it the dry season? Oh Just yeah, rainy season. season. So you want to, you want to, yeah, you want to dress appropriately, and um, you see, Lagos is very fun. 
hopefully, hopefully when or oh, well, um, there's there's a bit of um, um, system systemic um, um, or um, there's a bit of relaxation in the curfews that we've had. Some spaces are beginning to open okay. with a lot of um, precautions, social distancing, and the rest. Yeah. Although sometimes people can be very weird. Some folks would not uh, social distance, and um, the markets, the markets are bustling. The food markets, um, the craft markets. Nice. We have we have a lot of cra uh, craft markets. We have a lot of food markets. We have a lot of um, 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 our markets. Our markets are places you want you want to go to. Um, if you if, if 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 you go to Lagos Island, there there are a lot of crafts and. Um, um, very nice things you can you, you can pick up from there, and I know I I I know I know I know a lot of we have a lot of photography studios, so you might you might you may you may want to come around check out a couple of the famous ones. You definitely want to come to me for quality also, which is where I enter I'm not round enough though. So, so if, you wanna, if somebody you want, comes the, and they the, want the, the, uh, if they come and they want a portrait from you how is the best way okay. to, to get a portrait <clears throat> from you because you know that's something that um people are really loving now is to have portraits when they are visiting places and uh it's interesting mm -hmm. that this is sort of becoming a new avenue for the photographer so when i come to lagos you're taking my portrait exactly. i'm just telling you now i, <laughs> I want my portrait ah, taken. Definitely. <laughs> so no, tell, definitely. tell me definitely. should they contact so, um, you on the so social media or website or what yeah, so um, my website is www.aspixelsphotography.com. Um, I'm on Instagram as aspixelsphotography. Um, I'm on BNs as Retoucher Ace. That's my retouching handle. I post a lot of my works on that, on BNs as a retoucher. So okay. on BNs, I'm a retoucher, not a... Okay, I'm a, I'm a retoucher and a photographer on BNs. Um, but then on my on, on Facebook also, um, Ace Pixels Photography. Okay, um, I'll drop you, all the once links. You, once you get, just send once, me and I'll drop them all yeah, so once, people can find you, them. Yeah, once you get on my once you get on my website, the, um, there are links on the bottom um, that you can also always click on. That takes you to these um, social um, media um, pages, and um, you my my number my WhatsApp number is on my website, so. For more um, personal touch, you can always reach me on WhatsApp or place a phone call. You understand? You can do international calls. I take calls. So, um, well, I like to I like to do a lot of um, team stuff. So, if you if if, you, if I'll be making portraits with you, I like to make sure it's um, something a bit more not the ordinary. Maybe some some dramatic stuff so of course absolutely <laughs> look forward to that when you come around I, i'm quite a yeah. dramatic person so i think, I think <laughs> it will be quite fitting <laughs> it, 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 it fit perfectly. <laughs> Perfect. So how are things there yeah. with, with COVID-19? Do you guys have any um, dates yet for possibly reopening? And how is that affecting your creativity? Are you able to do any shoots? Or are you taking photos of the breakfast? Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, like I said, we started, we started opening um, up spaces um, recently. Um, cinemas um, um, have been have been given permission to open um, with reduced capacity, though. Okay. Um, restaurants are opening, so the studio spaces are also opening. Also, although we take we take a lot of precautions, so I've started doing I've, I've started doing a lot of shoots, not like a lot, but I've started doing some shoots. It's picking up gradually. Good. I must say, during the during the, during the lockdown, it wasn't so so easy. Mm -hmm. it wasn't so easy. It wasn't so easy. Okay, um, it was even more difficult for me as someone who was just transitioning into photography full time. You understand? Um, because down here, you we do, we, we we don't run a credit system like 
you guys do over there where you can actually get a lot of equipment and credit and pay right. and stuff like that. You have to get the entire money to right. get your stuff. Right. You, know, you understand? <laughs> <Right>. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm still I'm still I'm still saving up for a couple of um gadgets and um um stuff. But then um I have access to equipment when I need to when I need to use them. But then yeah. it's it's understand. Um yeah. so it's 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 things 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 are picking up gradually now. It's everybody everybody is praying for a period when we can all get back to our lives. Maybe maybe not maybe not like before, but at least something close to what it used to be like, yeah. and being able to get to gather and yeah, yeah. go to spaces that you used to go to, yeah. So things are things are picking up though. Things are picking up. Beautiful. Well, thank you, thank so, you much so much for your stuff. time today. <laughs> thank you so much to meet you and to talk to you. I'm glad you had time. <laughs> You too. <laughs> and yes, please keep in touch. Me too, me and uh, when I come to Lagos, please, you have to take my photo. So <laughs> I definitely will do that. It's been an honor. Awesome. Thank you. And have a great evening. Bye bye. You too. You too. <laughs> bye.